Aina Jaskelainen from the Finnish Social Science Data Archive. I'm also the content contact for SESTA Data Catalog, which is why I'm doing this presentation today. So now I'll stop sharing and leave the floor to Michele. Good morning, everyone. My name is Michele. I am a user supporter and training officer for the UK Data Archive at the University of Essex. <clears throat> Today, I will briefly uh, present you the user perspective of the Consortium of European Social Science Data Archives. Specifically, I will introduce one of the greatest challenges for conducting research in the field of social science which is find the right data set for a given research purpose. Then I will explain how um, the Consortium of European Social Science Data Archives help in dealing with this challenge. And to conclude, I will show you a practical example. So conducting a research project is a very demanding task, which is composed by different phases. All the phases are important, and each of them are characterized by specific and proper challenges and tasks. The first steps are very critical for the success of a research project. A famous Nobel Prize said, if I have one hour for solving the problem on which my life depends, then I will devote 40 minutes to study the problem, 50 minutes to analyze it, and only five minutes to solve it. This is only an example on how the first step of a research project are so important. During these phases, researchers spend a certain amount of time in finding the most suitable data set for that specific research project. However, how to find the right data set can often be very difficult and sometimes it may require a lot of time. So the big question here is, where is my data set? How uh, I can get access to it? Generally, there are two different scenarios that research face. In the scenario A, I know exactly where my data set is and how to get access to it. For example, the UK data service is holding the data set I need. In the scenario B, conversely, I have no idea where my data set is and how to get access to it. Unfortunately, the scenario B is much more frequent compared to the scenario A. Researcher who face the challenge of searching the most suitable data set for their research purpose frequently struggle. So the Consortium of European Social Sciences, uh, Science Data Archives, sorry, is a great search tool which can help to find the right data set. provide indeed several information of research data sets in different research contexts, including social sciences, health sciences, and humanities data. It allows to explore different data catalogs through a single search across different countries, which probably is the most useful uh, feature of the service. Moreover, it uh, uh, provides several uh, information and a general overview of a given data set. It links similar research and published work. The Consortium uh, of European uh, Social Sciences Data Archives is an open and free tool, and it presents a very intuitive and friendly interface. We will see some of these uh, features more in detail during the next presentation. But now I'm going to show you uh, a practical example. So uh, my research aims at understanding mother's and father's involvement in child's 
develop anchor. So first step, I go uh, to the Consortium of European Social Science Data Archives website and click on Data Catalog here. Then uh, I type the uh, keywords uh, in the search tab and of course, I've got uh, a large number of, um, of studies. After uh, I set some filter up, uh, I was able to find 111 studies. It is then possible to explore each of them and select some studies that may suit uh, with my purpose. For example, uh, after check uh, some of them, I found uh, this data set. This data set, entire planning court study, longitudinal family file 2001-2018, seems particularly interesting and uh, it's, it seems to, f to suit with my purpose. Then uh, the server uh, provides an easy gate of access to the data set where I may found other useful information. For instance, in the documentation section, I can see different questionnaires. I can get the access to them. Uh, I can see the user uh, guide of this specific uh, data set. And also I can get more information about um, some specific variable that the data set itself provide. So, uh, I was able to explore different data sets across different countries via the Consortium of European Social Science uh, Data Archives. And I was finally able to find the most appropriate data set for my research purpose. To conclude, it is very, uh, it, it often very difficult to find the proper data set the Consortium of European um, Social Science Data Archives can help to find the data set that suits the most with my research purpose. It allows to explore different data catalogs through a single search across countries, different countries. It contains several information which help to identify the most appropriate data sets. And finally, it um, is easily accessible and its interface is very simple and intuitive. Thank you. Thank you, Michele. Uh, so now that we have uh, more information about the use cases and how, how the data catalog would be useful for researchers, I will go and explain more in detail about certain stuff and how to get the best, op how to get optimal results out of it. So the main purpose of the SESTA data catalog, can you see my screen by the way? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. fine. Uh, is, is data discovery and data reuse. And uh, currently uh, there are more than 30,000 research data sets described and um, the metadata is, is provided by, by the national service providers of SESTA in, in 15 European countries. And the, a new version of the data catalog has just recently been published. Um, uh, it's, um, the changes include there are of course changes under the heart, but there's, uh, the filters have been improved and cleaned. And we provide more information about the vocabularies that have been used in metadata. Uh, search terms have been bolded, as you already know this in Michele's slides. And the keywords are now clickable. I will explain more about that, that later. And then there have been some label changes which, which uh, make them more understandable to users than previously. Yes, and just like uh, Michele showed, uh, you can use the, the collection years filter 
to to uh, because th this is about uh, date of collection so it's not publication of the of the study but this is how when the data data was collected so you can say for here for example it's the latest latest five years uh, and and the researcher is looking for discrimination so put discrimination in the search box and then he wanted to have data from Belgium and Croatia because you can choose more than one and then they got this um, the first result would be the minority and discrimination survey and the data catalog also shows if you have the study description available um, in more languages than one so you can see from from the uh, circle that uh, this particular data set has been described both in German and in English and if you click on it you can change and also as a tip when you're looking for cross-national data sets, for example, if you're looking at something like ISSP or ESSS you want, and you want to have the ISSP environment module. And if you put in ISSP and environment, you also get a lot of data from national, for the national uh, surveys of, of ISSP. But if you want to get the cross-national one, it pays to put in two or three countries in, into the to country field and that increases your chance of, of getting straight to the um, to the cross national one. And just like Michele said, this is the overview of the detail and you have this access data. And um, this is a landing page of, of GESIS, uh, which is the German data archive. And there you can see more information about how to download and click on questionnaires to see the questions. Um, and this is an example of the download page of my home organization, which is the Finnish Social Science Data Archive. And there you can see straight away, okay, this is openly available for all users, no registration immediate. It's a CC BY license, this data set. And there's a click to download data. But if you want to see what what kind of questions have been asked before you start downloading the data? You can click on the variables and then it gives you a list of all the, all the variables that the data set includes, or you can look at the code book. And I think research data sets do not have home. I don't mean that they are not creators or that they are not put in some repository or maintained there, but I mean, for as far as scientific disciplines are, um, are concerned, the, the data sets do not have a home. Because reuse is not restricted to the, the, to the same discipline as what the, the data set was originally collected for. The same data set can be used for uh, various purposes. So for example, one finish longitudinal series which has been following the same people for over 40 years uh, has been used for research and thesis for over 20 different scientific fields so that's why in the data catalog we uh, took the, we wanted to have the topic search and keyword search rather than than having the filter by discipline also because of, of interdisciplinary research so another example of if, if you, for example, of this topic search, if as a researcher is looking for information or data sets on gender, gender roles in the 60s, you can then just choose the collection years to be from 60 to 70. I'm not sure if you can see if this is too small, but, but anyway, the collection years have been uh, uh, selected to be the 60s and then you click open the topic filter and this actually if you have already selected uh, collection years it only shows you the topics that are available for those for those years and uh, you can see that these all the topics in which is gender gender roles are, are basically from the SESTA topic classification but because the, the harmony size and of how to use this term is still ongoing. Sometimes you have the broader terms we used also, and whether you put it before or after, it's different. But 
but there but you can choose all of these and then you get hopefully relevant results and the overview of the data set it also in addition to abstracts and creators and stuff like that it gives you information on the methods that have been impl uh, implemented to to collect the data and um, the info tip, which is the question mark, which is circled in red, it, it contains information of what vocabularies have been used for the time dimension analysis unit, data collection mode, and where to access these vocabularies. And there's also information on their topics and keywords and the info tips also tell what vocabularies, what is the most used vocabulary for this and how to access it. And the topics and keywords in this new version of data catalogs, they are clickable. So for example, I've circled now physical activities, which is one of the keywords and the system executes a phrase search on that. It is not actually restricted to the keyword element. So you can still find it, uh, find if the, the same phrase occurs in the title or in the abstract. But this is a way to, to increase the usefulness of, of keywords. And some note about the limitations. So in the previous slides, I've been in the English catalog and now I'm in the French catalog. So um, because of the, the search system behind this is Elasticsearch and of course Elasticsearch has language analyzers for each language to find different the, the plural and singular forms of the word and, uh, uh, and moving and move and, and all these and synonyms but, but it still works best if you have a, a language selected. And here you can see that the country filter is actually in gray. It means that it doesn't work for the, the French metadata that doesn't have the ISO code in the metadata and the country filter is, is based on this. So the, the info tips also give information about these limitations that the, the filters might have. And in this case, if you want it to, I've entered health in, in trends as in the search box. If you want to have find out information from a particular country, it pays to enter the name of the country also into the search. And even though there are language analyzers, uh, it's always if, if you have, especially if you have difficulties or want to be sure that you find everything, it's good, good to use the asterisk because even the language analyzers are not perfect. Um, so here you can see that if you're looking for election candidate data or something, we found eight, over 800 studies with this using the asterisk and without the asterisk, they're uh, less than 500. So it's good to bear in mind this asterisk use. All of these issues are explained in, in the user guide and the user guide can be accessed by clicking on the about uh, tab. It has a link to the user guide. And then we try to put in as many, uh, this kind of search tips to the user, user catalog, uh, user guide as possible. And if you're trying to find some kind of data and don't find it and want, would like to have it explained in the user guide, just send us feedback. On every page of the data catalog, there's a send feedback button uh, right at the bottom right. And uh, wh whatever feedback you have on the data catalog, we would be very pleased to have it. Or if you have a problem or want to ask about certain type of data or some, something, just send click on that and it will get back to me as a content contact or, or to John if it's a technical question. 
Uh, so the biggest challenges of the data catalog is, of course, that it, it, you don't have download directly. So you need to go to the service provider websites. Um, and another one is that even though all metadata providers use the DDI documentation standard, there, there might be a different interpretation of a certain element, what, what it should entail. And of course, some archives have just recently started while the, someone, some other archive might have, might have been working for, for nearly 40 years and they have a lot of metadata from old times. So the metadata harmonization is, is quite a big challenge still. And then one issue is also, of course, the data file language. So for example, the Finnish Social Science Data Archive, we describe all our data sets both in English and in Finnish. And not all data sets are available, the data files are available in English. So we do translate them for free if, if someone, a uh, foreign researcher is interested in them. So this is some issue that you, you need to, to also take into account. And then, as I mentioned, the, the country filter that we hope that more and more service providers will start using the, the code. I mean, many do, but not all. Uh, considering that we have metadata in different languages, uh, we found out that we cannot really base the filter on what is written in the metadata as the country name for the first that there are so many variations in, in whether it's a long name that is used or, 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 or short name or the variation and then in different languages. Uh, so we, basing the metadata, the filter was really messy. So we found out that the only way to go forward is to, is to use the ISR code. So if you're also involved in any of the metadata issues, it's always very, very good to use these, these, these standardized codes. And of course, not all service providers use the, the, the common vocabularies even more and more of them use. And then a few words about the future calls. Um, we hope to have as soon as, as, as possible to be able to add the information on associated publications. So this means on the, on the publications that have been based, where the data has been used, because this is also very uh, useful for researchers and of course data set citation information. So if the metadata has it, we hope uh, that we, we can start showing it. Um, of course, this is also dependent on whether these publications are, are actually reported to, to the data archives because it's, it's quite a lot of work trying to, to find out whether there have been publications and they're normally the people who give out uh, to whose data sets is archived, they're asked to provide this information. And it's really good if they can provide this information because then, they, then they, they, their publication can be found on, on, in the MITS data. And also we hope to get the publication date sorting because currently the data archive, uh, the data catalog can, you can sort by relevance or by the collection dates, but not yet by publication date. But we notice now with this COVID that actually this publication date sorting is also, also very relevant because if you have 90 COVID studies in data catalog one week, and there's 100 COVID data sets next week. At this point, we know this that is quite hard to find out which are the, the 10 new ones. And also if someone wants to keep track on a particular uh, subject, whether there has been any new data sets added on the subject is also useful for them. Yeah. And then we hope at some point to allow users to, to narrow their searches to open data only, probably as a filter. So there's a project going on that. And then there will be an API for the data catalog and its metadata by the end of, by the end of this year, actually. 
And we also hope to have more metadata providers uh, giving data to the, the data catalog also outside of SESTA, as long as they can provide the, the, the minimum the, the minimum metadata that is provided in, in the standardized formats. Okay, so I think we have the question and answer session. So there was one question about the, the, the API. And I think I, we already answered that there's an, an API will be becoming, that the metadata will be accessible. Um, yeah, and then with UK-based access going forward, we were not sure what this means. So if, if, if the person who put in this question uh, would like to ask something more, could they please just unmute themselves and ask? Okay, John, will you answer the, the next one about the secure access? Or it's someone, probably someone has answered this? Yeah, I've, I've provided an answer. Um, there's no, as far as I'm aware, there's no passport for um, researchers who are safe accredited to be able to take that accreditation to another country and other restricted data sets. I, my belief is, although I'm no expert in this area, that you would have to formally meet the requirements of each data repository in order to be able to get access to their restricted data. Yeah, so the restricted might mean different things. I mean, secure access is something like, like um, I mean, it might be something that you only can have a, a, a secure remote access, but restricted might also mean that, that you need to register or that if it's, if it's only for research. So if, if you are part of the university or research organization, then, then you just register. I mean, even if I remember right for, for the Finnish one, you register and then, then as, as you are a university member or, or then you have access to the data. So actually you need to, yeah, you, you need to check each, like John said, you need to, to look at the, the requirements of, of all. And in some, some cases, um, it, not all the service providers have direct download on their website. They might might also have uh, information that, it, it, like the, the 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 Swedish, I think they have. You just click on and and order the data set, and then probably the ordering form has has you need to fill in all the information that is needed. Uh, but but anyway. Uh, the SESTA data catalog should already, there, there's the terms of data access. And I am hoping that all service providers provide this data so you can already see in the terms of data access. So if it says this is only for research, um, only for research, it normally, the research, I mean, at least for, for, for my home organization, research includes master's thesis or something, something like that. So. So it, it's organization. Yeah. So John, can we see the next, next question? Um, when you say research data set, how do you handle ethical issue in Sweden? You have to have an approval of the Swedish ethical review author in order to conduct your research project. And then you reach, you might be in another research field and how do you handle this? Okay, this is something I, did not uh, yes yes I didn't sort of <laughs> didn't think of the ethical I just think that um, pro probably even if you are using reusing data you might need to then to, to go through the if, if it's ethical review 
uh, for your data set. So I, I don't have an answer actually to that, that but I mean, yes, I meant that, 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 that it doesn't necessarily, if, if, if it's used for, I mean, I mean, if, it, if, if your data were collected using, for example, for election study, uh, and it's totally anonymized data, uh, you can probably use it, some of the questions for studying something else. For, for example, it, it might be that the election data had something like, do you trust the government? Do you trust the politicians? Do you trust the police or something? And you could use this trust, uh, trust question to study for, for another, yeah. Uh, if, uh, no, uh, there are quantitative and qualitative data sets, uh, as well as longitudinal and cross-sectional. Um, there, there's interview, qualitative interview data, and there are data that has been uh, sort of gone from qualitative to quantitative, sort of like qualitative uh, content that has been been sort of categorized somehow. So, so it, yeah, qualitative, quantitative, and mixed mode data. It contains all. Uh, actually, the, the variable search, uh, it's, it's, it's a project. Uh, the very, you need to go to the service provider website to, to take more information, but, but it, it's in the hope list. I mean, it is in the SESTA wish list. So we are actually, there's a project going on this year, uh, looking at whether we can in, include the variables into the data catalog. Um, we, uh, uh, are you considering to include a filter to distinguish panel data from cost sections data? Yes, that is also in, uh, in the wish list. Uh, it will require, that uh, that enough service providers provide this time method information, and that they use the the time method vocabulary. We haven't had time to 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 look at this yet. Yet uh, the data catalog hasn't been um, in operation long enough, and this harmonization issue. But this is. This is one of the things that we have noted that would be very useful for researchers. So it's in the in the wish list, but not currently. Are there written instructions regarding the need to be followed in order to get the data to be listed? Uh, yes, um, I mean we have the um, metadata. Um, the, the, um, as far as metadata is concerned, uh, we have a um, metadata profile which specifies which element and, uh, elements are mandatory and which are, which are recommended and which are optional. And sometimes a sub element is mandatory, but it's mandatory only if the, if the parent element is there. So the parent element might be recommended, but if the parent element is there, then you need to have something uh, something uh, and th this will be um, we have just updated the 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 metadata profiles and they will be published in general very soon but actually I think we can share the link to the profiles with all the attendees of, of this meeting I just have to make a note to myself. And then John, do, do you want to say anything about the, the, the tech? I mean, you need to have an OIA PA mate or something about the technical requirements? Um, yes, you need to uh, make your metadata available via an OIA PMH uh, compliant endpoint and to serve the metadata in DDI 1.2.2 or 2.5 format as um, XML. So yep. if, if you do either of those, uh, then we can harvest, depending on the quality and consistency of the data that's actually in there, 
then it may or may not find its way into the catalog because you have to see the uh, CESDA metadata model to see which fields are mandatory. And if the mandatory fields aren't present, then the record doesn't get included. Yes. So it doesn't, this doesn't mean that your metadata need to be in the DDI format, but you need to be, if you have this endpoint, the OIAP image, you need to be, to produce the OIA from your metadata in, so that the OIA is in the 2.45 format, but, but it gets the metadata from your, from your files wherever they are, but they need to be produced for the data catalog. They need to be uh, consistent with the profile and I've had these, these mandatory elements and yes. Uh, when do you expect the field per access category to be available? Um, not sure if there's any, but the, the project ends by this year and what we, what we are doing in practice for this is that um, all service providers have their own access categories. And these are also dependent on the national legislation. So we don't expect anyone to change their categories, but we are, we are putting up a, a common, uh, it's, it's probably two or three, so it's open and everything else, or there might be three. That is a sort of says the common categorization. And then people are just asked to map their categories in the OIA to this one, and this this will, and this will hopefully um, that we will have it uh, the latest by the by the early next year within a year. So we're working towards it. Yeah. Uh, data originates from different countries from different legislation. Well, the the point is that the data catalog only only provides the metadata. It doesn't actually provide the data. And even if it contains variables, it only gave, gives information on the variables. So it, it's, um, uh, so, so if the data, uh, it, the access to access conditions, they concern the data files. And what data catalog has only has information about the data files and the data sets itself. Um, Yes, uh, and some data sets don't have a link to access data. Yes, uh, this is actually on my to-do list and I've been sort of making issues on those and finding out what, what, what happened. And sometimes some of them have only access to the, uh, to the general, the general uh, search interface instead of the, the particular data set. So we're looking also into that. So if you, if you are in a hurry and, and want to find out about, you can see who provided them and ask them, um, send them an email. Or um, if, if you get, a, if you land on the search catalog, look at, look at the study number or the PID that has been provided. And that way you can probably find the data straight away, information about the straight away. So sometimes you might need to do a bit of work. Um, yes, and if, if anyone has any comments or questions, just please ask, unmute yourself and ask. Uh, will the system metadata validator be available again? Do you have a timeline? Um, you mean valid? Do, do you mean for everybody, or or will it use be for for data catalog or or for 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 uh, for testing testing your own own metadata? I mean, in the in the data catalog, it will it will the plan is to incorporate it in. Some sometimes later this uh, in the summer, uh, we will only use the basic, the, the basic form that it means that it checks that the, all the mandatory elements are there and will reject the records that uh, which don't have the mandatory elements. And that, that's why we, so, so and the, the profiles that had recent, now been um, published will be the, the, the ones which the, the validator will be used for, for checking. 
Uh, I don't know about, I mean, the anonymized, it's a, the data is not anonymized, it's probably behind, uh, be behind some kind of secure access, safe remote access or safe room access, if it's not anonymized. Normally, uh, what data is, is available, I mean, I can't tell of, of all, of, of, of everything, but I think in, in, in the Finnish case, it needs to be anonymous, even though it's, it's qualitative data um, the researchers and then the archive anonymize the data. Of course, it's the anonymization. Um, yeah, it, it's quite a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, and as, as I said, there's no data. Um, so most of most of the data, uh, uh, not not quite sure. <laughs> So it, it depends on the on the data. Is there anyone from UKDS attending? Do, do you do you have non-anonymized data, for example? I, I think for Finland the the the, the legislation prevents us from, from allowing download from data that is actually not, not anonymous. Anonymized. Are there any more questions? Okay, if not, uh, will you stop? Uh, if, if you, anything comes up later, you just hear. So if you stop sharing, John, I will just go quickly with the. Uh, without the Tesla vocabulary service. So this is a. Um, a service where you can create, uh, maintain, and translate control vocabularies. Uh, and then there's the discovery and download user interface. This is a tool that's been created by SESTA. And, um, and, and uh, it depends on how many language version each vocabulary has. They might be up, up to 11. And, and th these are, like I said, these are often about the research, the vocabularies about research methods and more languages are of course welcome. It, it, I mean, you, if there's a sta stable organization wanting to maintain a language version, it can be done. It doesn't need to be a SESTA organization. So why I wanted to introduce this SESTA vocabulary service that it might also be useful for, for, for researchers. So if, if, if they want to to see how to describe their data, the methods of their data, it might be good to take a look. Or if, if they, they want to translate the, the, the methods uh, in, in, into English, for example, from a national language, and they're not certain how to translate it, because these are available in many languages, that might be help. And also, if, if you have a in, in, uh, uh, in-house data catalog for your organization. If you want to harmonize the data descriptions, these vocabularies are also useful. And there's also REST API and they, they, these vocabularies are, are, have an open CC by license. So this is there currently 28 vocabularies. So like I mentioned, the analysis unit, sampling procedure, time method, um, and time method mode of collection are, are, are there. The, the, at least those uh, that are used in, in SESTA. And the, the, these are mo most of these are provided by the DDI, the English ones are provided by the DDI Alliance, which is the, the for international data documentation standard. And um, so if you, probably too small for you to see, but if you click open one vocabulary, you, you can switch it from, language to language and this we, here we have the Italian version open and then in the versions tab you can see what has been changed between the the current and previous version and then there's citation and copyright and and, and stuff and then there's the 
tab for export and download, and you can download these vocabularies in SCOS PDF and HTML, and you can choose which languages to include in the in the download. So this is for the SESTA vocabulary service. And then there's also the multilingual thesaurus else that SESTA is maintaining. Um, it has more than 3,000 concepts and it's been translated into 14 languages. Um, and the, it, it's licensed by CC by SA. And uh, we use open source, SESTA use open source tools uh, to, to create this. Uh, so the Vogpens tree is used as the editor and there's this Cosmos browsing interface and uh, Scosmos provides also the REST API for, for the vocabulary. So for the use cases in this context, I think would be that if, if, you, if, if you're looking uh, something in the data catalog and don't think you can really find it or want to search for the, for, for the ELST vocabulary to see what kind of keywords might have been used for it. And then, of course, if there are organizations that are looking for social science thesaurus in, different, uh, in, in their own language to, to be used for describing and harmonizing the keywords, so else is out there. So, and this is the, the, in the, the browsing interface of, of, of else. So, thank you. That was all. And if you have any questions about uh, ELST or, or, uh, or vocabulary service, you can either write it down or, or considering there's not much time, just ask it out now. Unmute yourself and... Did we have any questions, John, about this? John? Sorry, uh, no, um, I've seen no questions about the yep. uh, vocabulary service. Yep. Oh, and having said that, there's one just appeared. Uh, will you include URIs for vocabulary terms of SESTA vocabularies? For now, I've seen URIs only for ELSE terms. Um, yes, that is something that we've been working on, um, having a form of unique identifier, which is resolvable. There have been some difficulties with the resolution service. That's the main thing that's been holding us back, is, um, is a technical difficulty. Um, so it's, it's being looked at, uh, but I'm afraid I can't give you a date at the moment when that's likely to be available. Yes, so it's in the wish list uh, and we, we have some problems with developer resources or at least finding a developer actually. <laughs> so can't promise anything very soon, but, but we, we have noticed this need. So yes, we are hoping to have it. So it, as it seems, there are no more questions. So I hope this has been useful and please send us any, any questions you might have. And as I said, uh, we will be sending links to the presentation and recording, and then I will include the links to the profiles. So you might not get it this week, but, but when the profiles uh, have been. And, uh, and thank you all for attending. And thank, thank you, John and, and Michele for, for participating. And uh, Thank you. ADB from Slovenia for organizing this webinar. This video is produced by the Consortium of European Social Science Data Archives. For more information on SESTA, please visit www.sesta.eu.